Sí. Just one, two, just. All right, family, we're gonna get started. So, can everyone please quiet down? Children, please quiet down. Anyone still walking around, please find a seat. There's, there's still chairs up here that are um, available. Someone come and grab their son. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Yeah. Who's ready to get started? Yeah. Just small voices. Wow. Everyone excited? I can still hear people talking. Everyone quiet down, please. Thank you, family. Just make sure all the children are seated um, during the word and even the skits as well and in worship. Just uh, there's no distraction while everything is going on. So parents and even the adults as well can just help out if, um, if, you see, if you see a child walking around. Praise the Lord. That's better. So um, I'm not going to do anything, eh? I'm just going to get straight to it. <laughs> you know, we're not in a competition here. <laughs> but praise the Lord. Uh, I think, so the structure for today will be worship first, um, skit, and then the word. And today, it will be Brisbane um, sharing today. Yeah. So Brisbane will be leading us in worship, and they're going to perform a skit, and then the word will be last. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Also, if you're, if you're new here, you weren't here yesterday, oh, you missed out in Auckland. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> um, the toilets are on my left side. The, the women and the, the men's on that side. And also, please... Can we use, um, look after the children as they go to use the toilet as well? Because the door was broken the other night. And the men, they had to go around. Nah, they didn't. They, um, <laughs> they had to hold it in. Nah. So the men was, wasn't able to use the, the men's toilet because there was no door there. So please watch your children when, they, when they're running around out there as well. Uh, but the toilets are fixed now. So if you want to use it, yeah, use it wisely, please. <laughs> And um, was there anything else? Yeah, I think that's, that's about it. But um, yeah, everyone ready? So we'll get the worship team up to, uh, so we can get started. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. That's enough, children. No. All right. Praise the Lord. I was going to pray and open up, and then we'll get started. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for who you are in Jesus' name. I pray that 
the people's heart open, Lord, and I pray that we humble ourselves and worship you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for just doing an amazing work in our hearts and helping us to understand how to truly worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord, in Jesus' name. So we just thank you for tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What's up, amen. church? Hallelujah. If you're feeling good tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody's feeling good tonight. Can I get an amen? If you're feeling good tonight. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right, well, I don't really have much to say, to be honest with you. Um, tonight's just... The only word that's coming to me tonight is breakthrough. Now, I don't know who, who needs that breakthrough tonight, but I'm, I'm hoping there's, there's somebody in the crowd tonight that needs that breakthrough, because I know I do. As you can hear, I'm a little bit under the weather. We're all a little bit under the weather, but you know what? We're here to praise God's name. And we're going to take that sickness, and we're going to use it to praise His name. Um... Feel free to worship in your own way, whether you're sitting, standing, lying down, whatever it is you need to do to be in that presence um, of the Lord, do it. Because I want to see everybody's hands lifted up, singing to the Lord, like be free. Don't feel like you, you got to look at the person next to you just because they worship you like this, you got to worship like that. No, 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 no. You worship how you need to worship. Remember, your relationship's between you and God, nobody else. Okay? Amen. Now she can get to Ben start us off. As I come into your presence, past the gates of praise, and to your sanctuary, till we're standing face to face, I look upon your countenance, I see the glory of your face, I can only bow down. And say, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Alpha Father. You are worthy of all praise. To you, our hands be you are awesome in this place, mighty God. As I come, as I come into your presence, past the gates of praise, past the gates of praise, into your sanctuary, to ascend any face to face. I look upon. Father 
story to this song I when Gope had told me to choose a song to um, sing for a conference I had pondered it on last minute um, it's called worthy is a lamb I received this verse when I received this song it's in Revelation chapter 5 verse 11 and 13 this is when John has a vision of many things and this is one of them, and it says, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and even under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that in them heard I say, Blessing and honour and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for this love. 
you already know this song um, it's he loves us um, but yeah I think just with all these songs these these gospel songs that we sing they're not just songs like like we thought of them in the world they they have so much meaning to the words you know and I believe that we should always sing with understanding you know that man man God deserves everything he deserves our all like shucks and he loves us even though we don't deserve it romans 5 8 for god demonstrates his love to us and while we were sinners yet christ still died for us and yeah so man I, I pray you should just worship with us go harder because <laughs> yeah he deserves it all and he is jealous for me he loves like a hurricane, I am a tree Bending beneath the weight of His wind and mercy And when all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions Eclipsed by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so he is jealous for me and he is jealous
Yes, praise the Lord. Okay, now the seriousness, no, seriousness is over. <laughs> Let's get it to some praise! <laughs> oh no.
Amen. Are we all warmed up now? Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
Just, just praise the Lord. What an awesome time of worship and praise. Amen. Everyone enjoyed that? Praise the Lord. So we're going to move, move on to the next, um, next program. And that will be the skit time. So uh, Brisbane will be preparing a skit. But um, again, if, if everyone can please hold on to their children. Um, and keep the noises down also. And um, yeah, just asking for everyone's um, undivided attention to the skit. And I pray that um, I pray that you receive something from the skit. You know, it's not just some skit to entertain you to for here to you know to perform here just to make you feel good. But the skit itself has a message, amen. And um, and I pray that you take the message and you apply it to your life. And um, yeah, I guess that's with everything that you're gonna be hearing and um and you know watching today is that you take the message in and that you apply it and that you don't let it fall on um, stony ground. Meaning that don't hide in your heart if the skit is speaking to you. And don't hide in your heart if the word is talking to you. Amen? So if, you're, if your heart is, hard, um, is hardened, just reach in and um, <laughs> do some work in there to, to soften. So that, you know, the message that's coming from here is, is not in vain. You know? And um, yeah, I guess... That's, that's what helps us, you know, that's what helps us to overcome in our walk, overcomes, uh, you know, the challenges that we face in life is that when you receive the word and you apply the word, amen, you not just receive it and you save it in your um, back pocket for later, but you receive it in your heart, amen, <clears throat> something I believe that the word of God does when you let it, that's the key word, when you let the word of God apply in your life, it changes you. Amen? Because Apostle Paul quotes or writes to the, to the, book, to the Galatians and he says, I am crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in us or in me. Amen? So, again, I'm sure you've heard, heard this message before, but you can be the walking gospel for other people that has never, um, I guess, heard of God and received God. Amen? So, please pay attention to the skit and um, receive something from the, from the message and enjoy. Hallelujah. Hello, hello guys, um, we're Brisbane. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> praise the Lord. He needs Zumba when we got praise dancing, man. <laughs> I felt the heat from back there, but praise the Lord. Uh, we're doing a skit and it's a skit some of you guys have already seen, but it can bring a, a new revelation singer again. And I hope and I pray for you guys. 
new guys. I know we go through different seasons in our walk, and at different times we can minister different things. So I hope this got um, this dance and this ski, uh, share to you, uh, sh share to you guys. But uh, yeah, I know in my walk there was certain times where yeah I didn't, I wasn't doing so good and. Yeah, I was going through my own things, you know. But one thing I notice is God still stands no matter what. No matter what season you go through, he will always remain the same. He will always still love you no matter what you're going through. I remember um, just earlier last year, uh, I, had my, I had my own family just um, give up on me. I had my brother say he, he doesn't know me, he doesn't love me. I had my dad say, uh, I'm, not, I'm not even his own son. Like, never have I heard that before in my, my whole entire life. And I had my wife uh, turn away. But one thing that it made me notice is that God will always be true to, to himself. And I, I came to a point where I just started crying and I was like, man, everyone else is doing their own thing. And then I looked at myself and I just started crying and I said, God, you know what? No matter what, if everyone falls away or do their own thing, I'm going to stay true to you or, because you, you never left me and why should I leave you, you know? But praise the Lord, I, I hope this um, message um, provokes you because it should provoke you to walk. If you're um, stagnant, if you're not doing so good, we all need Jesus. We all need Jesus in our, in our lives. And still to today, there's not a day I go by where uh, I don't need Jesus. But yeah, I love you guys. I hope you guys are blessed by the, the skit. Show me your face Fill up this space My world needs you right now My world needs you right now I can't escape Being afraid Fill me with you
Praise the Lord. All right, praise the Lord, family. Let's settle down. We'll get ready for the word. And uh, let's just welcome Fatongia from uh, Pastor Fatongia from Brisbane to share the word. Praise the Lord. Hello family, how are we doing? Good. Praise the Lord. Before we start, let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for this night. Thank you for this conference that you have given us, Lord Jesus. We know that when the brethren get together, Lord Jesus, it's always for a purpose, always for a reason, Lord Jesus. As long as you're the center of this stuff, Lord Jesus, this will not be in vain. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for being in the midst. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for directing this conference. We do this only for you, for your glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, there's a car that's uh, blocking the way. An ambulance is trying to get through. So... If you're blocking, if we can find out which car that is, I'm not too sure. But there's a car blocking the way, if you can move your car. Praise the Lord. So, this morning we had a baptism. Let's give a round of applause. Someone had got baptized. We thank God. It gives us the assurance that what we're doing is fruitful. So we thank God when people get baptized, get under the water, make the decision to give their life to Christ, we celebrate. So praise the Lord. Now all that's left now for whoever got baptized, stay in Christ, get fed, get planted, and you'll be sustained in your walk. So tonight's message, I'm going to speak about three topics. I'm going to speak about deception, division, and destruction. So the reason why I want to talk about these three topics, it's awesome that we have all the five branches here. We have Sydney, um, Auckland, Brisbane, Melbourne, and Wellington. And I find it necessary to be speaking about these three topics while we're all gathered here together. It's been a very long time that we haven't got, actually this is our first time that we've got together actually, to, um, to fellowship with one another, get to know one another. So I feel the need for us to speak about deception, division, and destruction. Let's get to the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. If you have your Bibles with you, I encourage you to pull it out. Read your Bible. Check if what I am saying is in the Scriptures. If you're not flicking through your Bible and just going off what I'm saying, be careful. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. If you don't have your Bibles, it's going to be up on the screen anyway. Here's what he says. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So those who know the context of Matthew chapter 24, the apostles, they approach Christ and they tell Christ, Look, what are the signs of when you're going to come back, of your return? What's the signs? What do we need to look out for? First thing that Christ says, Take heed that no man deceives you. Right? And you know, nowadays, there's so much weird stuff going on in society, true? There's so much weird things how they, I don't know, if, I don't know how many genders there are now, they start to push out that there's like 72 genders. They start to speak about you can pick your pronouns, you know, these weird stuff happening in society, right? But that's not the deception I'm going to be speaking about today. I'm more going to be speaking about the deception that comes within the body of Christ. Right, Because sometimes we can be so focused on what's happening outside there, but not realizing there's things happening within your own home. 
Have you guys ever had it where you're over your cousin's house, right? You go to the dishes and you're washing the dishes and your mum sees you washing the dishes and she's like, I don't see you doing that at home. And she drops these comments, right? But it's true in a sense. Why do we try clean out there when within here is not clean? So I want to talk about the deception that happens within the body of Christ to warn the church that these things can arise, but how do we deal with it as a church? Amen? This is a deception I want us to be careful of as well, is the deception that can cause division amongst one another. Right? This is the deception that we need to be careful of because when we're divided, we can't stand as a church. What's the point of us singing good songs, singing good hymns, having a good feed after when we're divided amongst ourselves? Does that make sense? So that's the, that's the deception I'm going to be touching on today is the division, deception that leads to division. Let's go Acts chapter 1 verse 14. Acts chapter 1 verse 14. Just before I read this, before I read this scripture, one thing that we need to understand is that there is a difference between unity and chemistry. Chemistry, I'm not talking about the science part, you know, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about chemistry when a group of people or a couple work well together, right? That's what chemistry is. Unity is different to that. And that's why I'm going to read these two scriptures in Acts chapter 1, verse 14. This is what he says. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Notice he says that these all continued with one accord. With what? With prayer and supplication. Let's go Acts chapter 2, verse 46. Acts chapter 2, verse 46. I'll try my best not to go too fast, but um, if I'm going too fast, just re-watch the live video. Acts chapter 2, verse 46, and this is what it says, and they continuing daily with one accord, the they that it's talking about is from verse 44, these are the believers who had gathered together, it says, They're continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat the meat with gladness and singleness of heart. This is what unity is. Unity has a foundation. The foundation is always going to be Christ. Unity also has a reflection and the reflection would always be Christ. Period. If you see in Acts chapter 1 verse 14 and Acts 2 46, they got together in prayer and supplication. Who was that to? Christ. When they got together in Acts chapter 2, verse 46, who was it for? Christ. The foundation was Christ. What was the reflection? If you continue on in the book of Acts, if you want to know more about the book of Acts, tune into our live videos from Brisbane. Apostle Gabes is doing a series on the book of Acts. But anyways, you see that thousands and thousands of people were being saved. Why? Because they were in unity. They had the right foundation and he reflected the foundation. Chemistry is a bit different. We're going to go into this. Let's go to Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 to 9. I want to touch on chemistry. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 to 9. This is what he says. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain a plain in the land of Shina, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they do begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they had imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, and, and they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thenceforth upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did 
there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. That's what he's saying. A group of people that were journeying along, they found, a, they found a field where they can build a tower. And they all agreed with one accord, let's build a tower that can reach to the heavens. This is the difference between chemistry and unity. Chemistry can have a foundation, but does it need to be Christ? Sometimes it's not going to be Christ. How do we see this? In the book of Genesis 11, what was their foundation? Let's make a name for ourselves. You see, their foundation was them. What was the reflection in Genesis 11? It was them. They made the decision to build it. They, they wanted the fruit of this to reflect them. So chemistry is not a bad thing. I'm not speaking from the perspective that chemistry is bad. But when we kind of mix up chemistry from unity, we can allow chemistry to, um, to darken what unity really is. For example, I'll give you an example, right? Here's a footy team we had. I used to play for uh, Guilford Owls. If anyone knows, just sub a few downs. I played for Guilford Owls, right? We were a very good team. We won grand finals, undefeated. Very good team. The reason why it was boys that we grew up from, from the area. We grew up, we had very good chemistry. But deep within our team, there was certain issues that no one would know about. This person was after this person. This person didn't like that person. We had good chemistry, but that doesn't mean that I like you. Does that make sense? We can work together, we can serve the food, and we can like clean together, look so good. But that doesn't mean that I like you. That's chemistry. But unity is based on what your foundation is and what it reflects. A lot of the times, our unity within the body, it's challenged by when challenges arise within the body of Christ. When there's backbiting, when there's slandering, when there's false doctrine being preached among us, that's when unity is going to shine. Does that make sense? It's easy to serve and clean with your brother and sister. It's easy to play instruments with one another. But the moment things start to get heavy and get challenging, is unity still going to be present? A lot of the times, you're not going to see unity until challenges arise. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 101, verse 5. Pastor Nola was sharing last night he was sharing about challenges that are going to come, talking about trials, talking about different seasons, right? And one of the seasons that we really need to be careful of and understand as a church is that challenges are going to come to challenge the unity within us. But how are we going to go about it? That's what he says. Whoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. Whoever has a haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. Having the ability to still love and approach and be united to your brethren while this is happening to you, it's tough. True? It's very tough knowing that, man, the very people that you want to lay your life down for is the very people that are speaking against you. I guarantee you if people within the world were speaking against you, you wouldn't even care less. True? Like, so what? But people within the body, it affects us so much. When these things happen, it's your unity being challenged. What's going to happen? Are you going to conform? Are we going to stoop down low and slander the person back? These are things that we've got to be very careful of. Unity is going to be shown when it matters most. With issues, with gossip, with problems. That's when it matters most. It's good. Don't get me wrong. Chemistry is good. Playing together as a band, that's awesome. Serving food together, awesome. Praise the Lord. But what matters most is the unity, being able to stand strong when problems do arise. I want to share something with you guys, right? We live in a world where we have access to information. We can, we can get access to it easily, right? It's technology is so advanced that getting information is easy. Right? If you want to be up to, up to date with the latest goss, what do you do? Just sign into social media. Up to date. Make a TikTok account, you're up to date with the latest goss. Right? If you want to know certain information, certain facts, jump onto an AI app 
AI will give you, do all the starting for you, right? There's so much access that we have to information. I want to share with you guys something. It's good. I think Apostle Alan touched on this on Monday. He was sharing about knowledge puffing up. Knowledge and information is good, but knowledge and information should never be shared at the expense of unity. I'll give you an example. Things that can happen. Let's say there's a certain thing that I heard about a brethren. I don't know, but I just heard it. That's knowledge I have now in my mind. That's information that I have in my mind. The thing is, I don't know whether it's true or not. Don't share it because do you know what you're gonna do you know what the expense is? Unity. Because you don't know whether it's true or not. If I find out an information about, I'll say Gabe's, right? I don't know it's true. I just heard it. Somewhere down the grapevine. I was up to date with the loudest, with the latest goss. But because I don't know, I just remain silent, keep that knowledge within myself, keep it in prayer. Lest the expense of it be unity. Let's go to Acts chapter 15, verse 1 to 2. I want to share with you guys a story. And I want to share with you a testimony of, in regards to unity as well. Acts chapter 15, verse 1 to 2. And then we're going to read verse 24 to 25. Acts chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. Then we're going to drop down to verse 24 and 25. Here's what he says, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Before we go to 24 and 25, this is what's happening. There's a debate going on within the church. They're talking about the law of Moses. Do we need to be circumcised to be saved? Some people are saying yes. Some people are saying no. And this is what Paul and Barnabas do. Let's go up to Jerusalem. Let's go speak to the apostles and the elders. And if you know the backstory to this, they get to Jerusalem. In history, it's called the Council of Jerusalem. They get together. They're discussing this matter. They're going back and forth. And then they get to verse 24 and verse 25. And this is what he says. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from among from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment, it seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. There was a disagreement that was happening in the church. They took it up to the apostles and they took it up to the elders. And in the way they end it, they go, it seems good to us being assembled with one accord. And there was unity and go, this is what you're going to do now. Go to that church and tell them what we have came into agreement to. Unity. Right? And this is the thing. There was accountability with what they taught. Look, to be honest, we, we can't deal with this issue now. Let's go up to the rest of the eldership and let's, let's discuss this among them. Awesome. A good picture of how it starts first within leadership that there is unity within leadership. Now go teach the rest of the flock. This is what we came into agreement to. I'll share with you as a testimony. There was a, a time in my walk, I think about two, three years ago, where I was doing a lot of study. I was doing a lot of study uh, with the Roman Catholic Church, just looking into the theology, looking into the history and everything. And I started to question a lot of, a lot of things within their church, right? And then I started to question, and I was like, wait, how come there's some things within the Roman Catholic Church that's within ministry? And it troubled me, and I was like, wait. And one of the biggest topics that troubled me the most was the Trinity. And I was like, wait. The Catholics, that's like their pride and jewels, the Trinity. And I was like, but we teach that in ministry as well. Like, why do we teach it in ministry? So then I went on a journey when I started, you know, exploring other doctrines, other denominations. And I came across the oneness theology. Anyone heard of the oneness theology, right? I came across it, right, and it kind of caught my attention. I was like, whoa, oneness. This is, seems legit. 
Any of you guys watch Gino Jennings? Yep. And I watched some of his videos, right? Anyone watched Marcus Rogers? Yep. And I watched their videos, right? And they're talking about the Trinity and they're like kind of like debunking the Trinity and I was like, whoa, this seems legit. Right? This is what happened, right? And this is where I went wrong. So I started to share it amongst the brethren up in Brisbane. I started to share my view and everything. And then eventually, you know, word started to travel. Started getting phone calls. Those pastors know when you get phone calls from the apostles, something is wrong. True? <laughs> when you're getting missed calls, oh, the apostles are calling me. Anyway, I got phone calls, right? And they're like, hey, man, I heard this about, you know, the one that's like, is he, are you serious? And I was like, yeah, bro. And this was the thing, the elders, we got together. We had like three, four sessions about it and everything. And even though we had the meetings and everything, I, I still wasn't settled, so to speak. I just felt like my questions weren't answered. But this was the thing, right? The counseling that I got was take these things into prayer and meditate on it. That was the counseling I got. It's like, okay, praise the Lord. To be honest, I didn't. I was just doing more research without praying about that certain topic, you know. But this was the thing, right? I had the opportunity because I was, in, um, I was in a state where there wasn't much accountability. I think at that time, I may be wrong, at that time I was the only elder there. So there was no accountability. I could have been able to share my theology amongst the flock. But this was the thing. If I share that information and that knowledge that I have, the expense of it is division. The expense of it is that now Brisbane has a different theology to Sydney. Brisbane has a different theology to New Zealand. And that's what we shouldn't be doing where we're sharing information at the expense where we're divided with the other branches. Unity is a powerful thing. But if we're going to be sloppy and just not be careful with our words, the expense would always be unity. Let's go to the book of, sorry, book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 says this, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. There's a judgment that awaits for people who just share things carelessly, not even thinking about what they share. And then when things start to go downhill, they'll be like, oh man, I never knew. Are you just thinking about it now? Have you heard of their saying, think before you speak? Very old school saying, right? Very old. But not as old as Apostle Gabriel. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's, it's an old school saying, right? Old school saying, think before you speak. It's also, we, we see this from Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. When he does come to information, when he does come to sharing things, use your brain. Think. What's going to come out of it? What am I going to cause when I share this information? Is it going to cause us to continue to be united? Or is it going to cause brethren or branches to be divided? When it comes to division, there's ways that you see within scriptures how they deal with disagreements and everything. And that's why I read Acts chapter 15. You see the accountability that they put on it. You will also see this in Matthew chapter 18. You guys know the scripture of Matthew 18 when he talks about if a brother has something against you, go speak to that person. You will alone. You will alone. Go speak. Have a conversation. And he says, if you haven't sorted that out, go bring witnesses. Bring more people to the party so we can get the truth out, so we can get to, to a conclusion with this. And he says that if you still haven't came to a conclusion, if they still don't hear you, he says, take it to the church. I want to share with you guys, lest he gets misinterpreted. When he says, take it to the church, it's not your permission to go spread it around the church. All right? Take it to the church. I'll give you an example, the logical thinking of how you interpret this, right? Let's say you get invited to a church. And you want JJM as a whole to go there. Where would, who would you go speak to and who would you ask? 
the leadership. You go straight to the leadership, same thing as another church. If there's something that you like to do with another church, you wouldn't go to the flock member, you'll go to the leadership. Same thing as a family. If you would like to babysit children, you wouldn't go ask the children, because that would seem creepy. You'd go to the parents, right? You would go straight to the parents, be like, hey, look, um, if you guys want, I'm a babysitter, right? Similarly to this, when it's saying take it to the church, there are people within the church that can help get to a conclusion to help heal that division that's within the body. A lot of the times where we go wrong as a church is before we even do any of that, we take it to everyone. We take it to every single person but the Lord or take it to every single person but the actual person. That's why we get divided. That's why we start to become partial. That's why we start to have all these cliques. It's because we don't deal with the the differences and the division within us. Accountability is a very good way to overcome. I'm not saying it's the only way, but it is a good way to overcome division. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 2, this is what he says, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. And Psalm chapter 133, verse 1. Psalms chapter 133, verse 1. This is what he says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Fulfillment of joy would never be present amongst the church when we're divided against itself. When we're divided and people are laughing and everything, I'll tell you what that is, false joy. It's false joy. Joy comes from us being united in Christ. How can we have joy when Brisbane and Auckland are probably against itself? Where Brisbane and Melbourne are against each other, how can we have joy with that? That's why Paul is saying, fulfill ye my joy when we are together as one. When there is no tension. I want to settle the debate between Australia and New Zealand. (laughs) Do you know this? Give New Zealand back to Jacinta. She can have it. (laughs) Give Australia back to Albanese. We're sojourners. Do you know that? We're sojourners. This is not our home. I remember a story that Apostle Alan shared. I like, it's a crack up. If I share it wrong, forgive me, but I'm just going off memory. This was about six years ago you shared it and I cracked up. I think it was his son. His son was having an argument with some guy in Plumpton. Some guy in Plumpton was saying that this is his area or whatever. And he was like, yes, Plumpton's my area or whatever. And Apostle Alan's son or his brother or whatever looked at him and goes, Plumpton, you can have it. <laughs> you can have Plumpton. Same thing as us, Australia, have Australia. Bidwill, sorry, it was Bidwill. <laughs> sorry, I was trying to think of the worst place in Mount Jewett, so I just feel like, nah, just <laughs> nah. nah, it was Bidwill. Apologies, it was Bidwill, right? It was like, have Bidwill, you know? I just say that just, you know, under the laughing and all the games and jokes, you know, I know we have a laugh and jokes, but at the end of the day, you know, we're sojourners. You know, this is our temporary home, Australia and New Zealand and wherever else. It's our temporary home, right? So with our joy, with how we enjoy each other's company, it's going to come from how we united with each other, right? And there's going to be no fakeness when there's proper unity. Let's go to John chapter 17, verse 11, 21 and 22. John chapter 17, verse 11, 21, and 22. So what it says. Those of you that know, this is just before Christ gets crucified in John 17, and now he's having his moment with the Father. He's now taking things into prayer, things that are on his heart that he just wants to take to the Father. And he gets to verse 11 and 21 and 22. This is what he says. And now I am no more in the world, 
but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine, thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. Verse 21, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that thou also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. 22, and the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. Something you notice about this chapter in Jan John chapter 17, three times Christ makes reference and prays for us to be one, and he compares it to the Son and the Father being one. Three times. Within the Bible, when you see the number three being used, there is certain times. There is an understanding that when the number three is used within the scriptures, it reflects divine wholeness, completeness, and perfection. So for Christ to put that in his prayer three times, we should get the point how important unity is. It was his prayer, let them be one how we are one. Let them be united the way that I'm united with you. And when you see the relationship between the Father and the Son, you'll see submission. You'll see laying down their life. You'll see laying down their will. you see serving. You see these things. To a lot of religions out there, especially Islam and Oneness and even Jehovah's Witness, they question these things because they don't understand if Jesus is God, why is he in submission to the Father? It's a concept that they can't understand, that they think that just because you serve, that you're lower in essence. No, it's not. Serving is a demonstration of humility. Serving one another is a demonstration of us being united with one another. And if you think that just because you're, you serve, that you're lower, you have a bad mentality. It's wrong. You'll see it throughout scriptures where he talks about the wife being in submission to the husband, serving the husband. Does that mean the wife is lower than the husband? Absolutely not. Anyone that teaches anything otherwise, they're probably a heretic. They're probably a woman abuser. But it's not serving, it doesn't mean you're lower. And I share this because when we want to know unity, when we want to know how we're supposed to function as a body, we look to who? God. And we see how they were united. You see how they function. And then that's our standard now for the church is the person who started the church, God. When we look outside of God's standard and we look to chemistry, it's got to, unity's got to look like that. We work together well. We can play as a band good. We can serve the food good. If we look to that as standards of unity, then we're in error. Our standard of unity always has to remain on Christ because he's an infallible source. He's an infallible authority, not capable of making mistakes at all. So if that's our standard, your standard cannot err. It cannot go sideways because you have the right standard. Let's go to Mark chapter 3, verse 24 and 25. Just a little side note, just because I'm emphasizing on unity, I'm not devaluing love. Obviously, love, unity comes from love. Yeah. This is just another part of love that I'm emphasizing on. Mark 3, 24 and 25. This is what he says, And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, the house cannot stand. I'll tell you this, and I promise you this. If we are divided as a church, we will crumble. Destruction is coming our way. Doesn't matter how good our doctrine is. Doesn't matter how good we go out there and we pray healing and everything. If we're not united within here, we're going to crumble. A kingdom that's divided and against itself, it cannot stand. Any of you guys know the Roman Empire? Roman Empire? Back in the days, even until now, the Roman Empire is known as the most powerful empire that ever existed. They were a powerhouse. When it came to conquering them, it was next to impossible. 
Something that you'll see within history with the Roman Empire, the worst wars that they ever faced, it wasn't against the enemies. It was against themselves. A lot of times, a lot of empires will come and try to con conquer Rome. They'll come into the city and try to conquer Rome, but they were too, they were a powerhouse. They were too strong. You know, whenever Paul speaks about in Ephesians 6, where he talks about the, the armor of God, he's using the Roman Empire armor as, as a reference point. When he's talking about the helmet and everything, that's the Roman Empire's uniform, because they were a powerhouse. But the worst wars that they faced was wars amongst themselves. Enemies weren't able to take him down. It was themselves that took themselves down. Do you see the seriousness of Mark chapter 3 verse 24 saying that when a kingdom is divided against itself, it cannot stand? How many of you guys have grew up in homes where you came from broken homes, your parents would argue all, this, all the time, you and your siblings weren't getting along? It's not a happy home, right? Why? Because you're divided against itself. You can't. You can't find joy. You can't find peace. You can't find fulfillment when there's division. The only thing that we have coming to us is destruction, falling apart, being divided. If division is not dealt with accordingly, then it's, it makes this in vain. That makes sense? If we think that we're better than New Zealand, if New Zealand thinks that they're better than us, and it's an actual serious heart condition, what's the point of this? We're divided. Why should it be like that? That makes sense? When we're calling out states and we start booing each other, boos, like, oh, come on. We're family, right? We're family under one name, Jesus Christ. Right? You can take Australia, you can take New Zealand, you can have it. But don't take Brisbane because Brisbane is <laughs> checks. You know. Us as a church family, I tell you, we can't we can't survive without unity. We can't say that we love one another, but we don't want to make the effort to unite with one another, to overcome the differences and the division that we have. You'll see it when John says it. How can the love of God be within you if you can't love your brother? Right? How, how can it be within us? The scripture that I want to finish off with to encourages when I read this and I was going through this study because unity is a tough thing to do especially when challenges are always there especially when you're going through your own things right we all go through things behind the scenes we go through challenges we go through trials and tribulations that happens now hearing that there's a problem as well that that may need your help you're like man but I'm trying to deal with my own stuff these things are tough Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. This is what he says. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. This is what endeavoring means, right? It means to make the effort, be diligent, do it quickly, with speed. In other words, don't be content with division. That's what he's saying. Endeavor to keep the unity of peace. Don't be content with division. When you know that there's things going on that's, man, I've got differences with someone. There's tension between us. Don't be content with that. Some people do this, right? Let's say me and Gabe's, there's, there's things between me and Gabe's. I'll go up to him and be like, hey man, Gabe's, um, can I talk to you, bro? And he's like, nah, not right now. But oh, well, I tried. I tried, you know, man, I'll, I'll keep you in prayer. No, you didn't. Endeavor means to be diligent, to do it until unity is there. That's what endeavoring is. I'm not going to be content with being divided. But a lot of times we get, we're, we're content with it. Oh, I sent him a text, he didn't reply back, so, Okay. No, like, it's like, what? Are you serious? Oh, I tried calling him. Like, come on, like, that's, that's step one. You got to get to unity, endeavoring, make the effort. Because it's challenging. It is, 100%. But 
This is why Paul tells us to endeavor, push, to get that product of unity. Why be content with it? When there's false doctrine lurking around the church, why be content with that? Why be content with that? When there's certain teachings that's causing people to err, why be content with that? Right? When brethren are slandering one another, why be content with it? If you're a bystander listening in, why, why be content? Right? Why just be like, oh, it's just another people just talking about it? Like, why? It shouldn't be something that we're content with. It should be something that hits us and like, man, we need to do something about it. Because it's going to cause this church to be divided and to fall. I really want to push out and let you know that we cannot stand unless we're united. The worst wars, you can look it up not only within Rome, is wars that happen within side of their own empire, within side their own military. <clears throat> a lot of the times, our, a lot of the biggest problems that we do have within the church is not necessarily stuff that happens outside, but within us. Right? And I think that's why we have these guidelines within the scripture. It gives us the information. It lets us know on how we can be able to put aside our differences and go back to the standard with, with the, which is Christ that helps us and it's going to help us overcome the differences that we have within each other. We all have different opinions, right? There's going to be different opinions. Some people say that this food is better than that food. Of course, we're going to have differences. It happens. We're humans. How boring would it be if we had no differences? Right? We'll be like robots because we all know each other. We all know each other personally because it's exactly the same. But the reasons why there's differences is because that's when we'll be able to demonstrate unity, love, joy, peace. It's because we're different. I want to encourage you, church. I think... Um, we had a meeting and Tui made reference and we're like, wow, that's, you know, that's awesome. He was saying that, you know, it's, we've been operating for about, I think about 12 years now. You know, and it all started in Sydney and now we've branched out different states, different countries. Awesome. These things are good. But what's going to continue to make those things fruitful is when we continue to be united with one another under the authority of Christ. If we're going to lose sight on the person who is the foundation of this church and what he expects for his church, we're going to crumble. So I want to encourage you with, with things that happen around the church. It can be gossip. It can be doctrine. It can be... Anything, anything that you see that has the potential to divide the church, do not be content with it. We'll make the effort to stay united with one another, make the effort to stay as a family. But it's the thing we've got to look out for one another, right? Before I pass it back to Vita, I'd just like to pray for us, pray for us as a church. If we can stand, stand together, stand in prayer. <clears throat> Have a stretch. Let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is true. Lord, we see that your desire for this church is to stay united under your authority. We just want to pray, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if there's anything that's causing the body of Christ to be divided amongst itself, to be divided against itself, Lord, whether it's doctrinal matters, whether it's gossip matters whether it's opinion matters Lord Jesus anything Lord Jesus that's causing us to be divided we just want to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that everything gets exposed everything gets brought to your altar Lord Jesus so that the church can be united with one another Lord we know that the 
our duty as Christians is to grow more and more in love with you. But in the same time, man, we grow more in love with the brethren in Jesus' name. As your word does declare, Lord Jesus, and does tell us to have love one to another. We want to pray, Lord Jesus, that we continue to grow in love and compassion towards one another. May our relationship, Lord Jesus, with you grow in the same time, Lord Jesus, our relationship with each other grow in Jesus' name. We thank you for this conference. We thank you for this time that we're able to have as a church. We thank you that you have allowed us all different branches to get together under the one roof, Lord Jesus, to learn more about you. We pray, Lord Jesus, as the conference does continue, that we'll continue to lift your name on high. If there's anyone here that, um, if there struggles, Lord Jesus, for them to approach us, uh, situations where division is present lord jesus we just want to pray give them the wisdom lord jesus give them the understanding that they may be able to approach every challenge lord according to your word we thank you lord jesus for everything that you've done to your for your church we thank you lord jesus for your love grace and mercy upon us though we fall short though we are unfaithful lord jesus we thank you lord jesus that as we um, Come to the altar with a heart of repentance. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that, that there's restoration and reconciliation with you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. All glory and all honor and all praise goes to you. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and the saints say, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.